So I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but it's been a while since I've done a video and I told myself I would be um, really on top of my video making schedule and that has not happened because life is crazy, working with a lot of amazing women, helping them get their period back, helping them fully um, recover from eating disorder behavior and get their life back. I've been working hard on a lot of other projects that I've been doing and Anyways, so this has been a while, but I really wanted to come on today because I have just been really in awe of the recovery process and sort of just the results of my recovery and I really just wanted to share it with you guys because I think recovery in and of itself is a very hard thing. No one wants to go through recovery. We all want to be recovered. We don't want to go through recovery because we honestly, we don't know how great recovery is. And so, and it's really fearful. You're letting go of all of these behaviors that you're just so used to and you're letting go of old um, thought patterns and the control. That's a huge thing. You're letting go of control, this control that you think once brought you safety, but now you realize it's just like messing up your life. And Anyway, so no one wants to go through it. So I really just want to have this video be something that you guys can listen to to really just share with you guys how amazing recovery is so that you do want to take those hard steps of, okay, I'm quitting exercise. Okay, I'm gonna eat my fair foods. All right, I'm gonna give up this like idea of what I want my body size and shape to be and I'm just gonna allow my body to be and to nourish it with good foods. Um, so hopefully this is going to help you guys. Um, but basically I just wanted to share real quick sort of, um, one of the main, I would say, honestly, one of the main benefits of my recovery. Um, so let's, let's rewind here back to when I was vegan. Um, so I was vegan for many years and I claimed that when I was vegan, I was recovered, but little did I know I was not recovered at all. Um, I really was just still taking that control that I needed in my life and that desire to be thin and maintain a certain weight. And I was just, now I was eating and now I wasn't so, um, obsessive with exercise and all of that, but I was really obsessive with this idea of being vegan. And um, I grew up in a family, there's six of us, um, well, six kids, so eight of us um, with my parents. And we always sat down every single night, and we still do every single night, we sit down and we have dinner. We put on the candles, we put on soft music, we sit down, we eat, no telephone, no TV, no nothing. And it's such a great time to come together with our family and to talk and to laugh and to, um, see how each other's days went and all of that. But anyways, when I was vegan, I never did that. I chose to go and eat and I have my little studio and I have a little kitchen and all of that and I would make food here and I would eat my dinner alone. 9.5 times out of 10, I would be doing this. Um, I never wanted to eat with them because they were eating butter and chicken and meat and fish and um, pasta and things like that that I just told myself that's unhealthy and I don't want to eat. Um, and that was really hard for me because I love my family. I love sitting down and eating dinner with them, but I chose to be rigid with my diet more than choosing to enjoy my family time. So anyways, I decided to leave veganism. And as I decided to leave veganism, I started eating dinner with my family every night. Now it's been about seven months since I've left veganism and I can honestly say that I cannot remember a time that I have not eaten dinner with my family members. Um, and last night when um, I was out to dinner with my family, we had a friend come and I got a ribeye steak to um, share with my dad. We shared a couple dishes and here I am and I get the steak and I'm like cutting it up and the girl looks at me and she goes, wait, aren't you vegan? And um, my dad goes, yes, she was, but it's been great. Doesn't she look so healthy now? And she's been eating dinner with us every night. And it's been such a blessing to have my daughter back at the dinner table. <laughs> and like, I'm going to cry. Um, 
it was so sweet. It was so sweet. And I've just, I've heard my parents say this many times, just that like, they're like, I got my daughter back. Like, it's so sweet to see you around the house and to not see you so stressed about your weight and about what you're eating and to just see you as a human being again, enjoying food and enjoying sitting down at the table. And they really just saw how um, divisive the veganism was for me. And just, I mean, my eating disorder in general, how that was for me, it was very isolating. And um, to hear my sweet papa just tell me that like he's really enjoyed having me at the dinner table was really, really sweet. And to not, you know, be the person that's going into the kitchen and trying to micromanage everything that my mom's making and don't put butter in this and no use olive oil and don't fry the olive oil and like all this. It's like, no, I just, I literally go home and I sit down and I eat whatever is put in front of me with so much gratitude. And I totally recognize now that you know, life's not about perfectly eating. Life's not about maintaining the quote-unquote perfect body or the perfect weight. And it really is about just community and relationships. And, you know, I think this is something for you to ask. Like, are these behaviors um, enhancing your connection with others? Do you feel like you can maintain good, healthy relationships with these behaviors? Are you isolating yourselves? Because honestly, I can tell you, that it's not worth it. It's not worth having quote unquote the perfect body if you don't have any family or friends and if you can't even just freaking enjoy a meal that's put in front of you. Like this thing that for ages, for millennia, since the time that human beings have existed, the idea of coming together and eating is huge. That is what brings us together. Whether you are Muslim or Mormon or Christian or Asian or white or, um, African American or whatever, whoever you are, we all do this thing called eating. And when you are going through an eating disorder, you can't do that anymore. Therefore, you are taking yourself out of this one thing that humanity has been doing forever, this thing that has provided so much community and love and support in people's lives. When you look at the blue zones, the people in the blue zones, I'm like, I gotta wipe my tears. <laughs> um, oof. The people in the blue zones have been, um, if you don't know what they are, they're um, sort of eight different places in the world that have some of the longest living people. So you have centurions, um, people living 100 years and plus. And they look at what they're doing and yes, they're eating really healthy diets. They're moving a lot and all of that. But one of the main things that each of these blue zones have that is a huge contributor to their longevity is the fact that they have tight knit communities. Whether you're in Okinawa, Japan, whether you're in Sardinia, Italy, you grow up with some the same people that you end up growing up with and living your whole life with and you feel supported and you eat dinner together and they're just they're very communal beings and we as human beings are communal we can't keep on just isolating ourselves and when we put labels on ourselves i'm this i'm that i'm vegan i'm keto i'm paleo like whatever we're just separating ourselves. We're saying, I'm different from you. I'm better than you because that's definitely how I felt in veganism. Like, I'm better and greater than thou because I choose to eat cashew cheese instead of cheese that comes from cows. And it's very divisive. And I really saw that um, in my eating disorder. And as I've come out of it, that has been the most beautiful part is that my relationships have flourished. 100%. I just, I'm connecting with people on a different level. I'm not that crazy person who's like trying to micromanage everything, and control everything. Like I'm so much more just grounded and at ease. And um, it's just absolutely amazing um, eating with my family every single night and not eating alone. It's to the point now where I hate eating alone. Like literally, I will like go to my parents' house so I can eat breakfast with my dad because I'm like, I don't even want to eat breakfast alone. Like I don't want to eat dinner alone. I don't want to eat lunch alone. I want to eat with other people because I now realize that the eating, it's more than just putting food in your body. So if you are someone who has isolated themselves, who has taken them out of, <coughs> excuse me, 
if you are someone who has isolated yourself and who has um, stopped eating with other people, stopped going out with other people and then going to restaurants and doing all that, um, I challenge you right now to once a week, make sure that you sit down with someone else. It can be one person, two people, five people, 10 people, I don't care. Sit down with someone else and eat a meal. Invite someone over, make them food, go out to a restaurant, go to someone else's house for dinner. It is ridiculously healing, ridiculously healing. It's not worth eating in isolation your whole life, okay? So just get over all of these weird behaviors just step into your fear of eating more and exercising less and bring your body back into a nourished state so you can get your period back, get your life back, so that you can get your health back, your sanity, your sex drive, your mental clarity, everything. Like those things are, mm, they're so good, but they're not there when you're dealing with eating disorders. So I didn't want to make this over 10 minutes and it's already 11 minutes, so I'm just going to stop this now. If you're struggling, honestly, please reach out. I cannot tell you how powerful it is to just have someone there as a coach guiding you through this process because, yeah, it's scary as heck. I know I've been there. I've coached so many women through this. It's really scary. But it's not as scary and it seems way more doable when you have someone helping you just go step by step. And when you have someone to lean on. It's part of the healing process, guys. Learning to be vulnerable with others. Learning to open up. Learning to not have to do everything by yourself. Stop being so stubborn. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to feel like you need support in this. You're not weak for doing so. You are strong for asking for help. So if you are wanting help in your recovery, please send me an email. Let's set up a time. We'll talk. We'll see if coaching can be good for you. I don't know anyone who has gone through the coaching process, who has gone through recovery, who has regretted it. No one. No one. Trust me. Like, And this is what this video is about. Inspiration for you to realize just how great recovery is. So I'll leave my email in the description down below and I really hope that you reach out. But um, that is it for now. So definitely subscribe and hit the bell for the notification so that you know when I come out with videos. Trust me, they're not too often so you're not going to be bombarded with things. But I do want to start putting out a lot of content because we need to hear this and it's time that eating disorders stop rising. It's becoming a big epidemic pandemic I would say it's everywhere it's not just here in America it's it's in France I have clients in France I have clients in Spain I have clients um in New York and LA like sort of all over the world um we're all struggling with the same thing so anyways that's it for now have a beautiful day